Welcome to Coop and Duck, episode 62. We're at the Queen of Iceni. We're having a few craft beers. It's a beautiful summer's evening, late summer's evening. Craft beers. <laughs> yeah, craft beers. Teams are looking good. We have got Pinto back in, Oliveira's back in, and Wes is back in. Gone back to a more conventional four at the back, which I'm very happy about because I didn't think the wing backs worked. Simon, how are you feeling? Yeah, absolutely. I, f- I felt that um, Oliveira, Wes... I guess Pinto was was not match fit, but I thought the three of them were should have all started against Sunderland and yeah. didn't, and we paid the price. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The wing backs didn't work. Husband was crap. Yeah. Hopefully he's not completely crap. He's just unable to take people on in the way that Martin Olsen used to. Well, he's not going to have to take people on tonight because we've got Murphy playing as well. We should have said that. Yeah. Uh, Luxury attacking. Look, we're further. going to be late for the game because it's seven thirty eight. What's going to be the score at half time? Uh, at half time, two yeah. nil us. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to go 4 0 Norwich. No, 4 1 at uh, half time. Yeah, Oliveira hat trick by half time. By half time. Every single time he takes his shirt off. <laughs> no, yeah. he can't because he gets sent off second time. <laughs> um. <laughs> Half time, Norwich QPR nil nil by by some miracle nil nil. I mean, we have created a lot. Well, there have been no. I don't think there's been a lot of shots on target, but there've no, been some balls but we've been, drilled into the box. And we've been, been I, I feel we've been knocking on the door, yeah. but yeah, I mean, again, similar to the Sunderland game, we've maybe lacked the teeth. Um, we should have had a goal that half. I presume we dominated yeah. the possession. QPR have been dirty, choppy, and Ian Holloway is giving us the most ridiculous amount of back chat. He, he, if he is that aggro with the fans at every game, no wonder he's bald. He must be exhausted. It yeah. seems like the most stressful so, endeavour. So he was he was casting aspersions at the size of Chris's nose. Uh, he, he Ian saw, Holloway called me big nose. He came. And I hadn't even said anything to him. I know. That stage. I know. He did. I don't think I was he trying lo- to compliment him. No, I liked him until that point. Yeah, me too. I still do. He's a dude. But the fact is. I brought up the fact that um, his win rate, I read somewhere, is 37%, yeah. which is That's worse Roy than Keynes. Roy Keane. Um, and, and I he think said, we'll see after this. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've made it, I'm so desperate now for us oh, to win. Of course. And it's also, he gave the fisherman who sits um, like a few seats away from us. It was like proper squaring up to yeah. him doing all that shit. It's unreal. Yeah, it if he does that every game, it's like proper panto. It's ridiculous. What a dude. Husband's not good enough. No, no, he's not. And in fact, we actually saw a situation where Harrison Reed, although he was in position, Harrison Reed bombed across right in front of um, Husband to deal with something because yeah. Husband was completely out of his depth, in had, position. He had to clear up Husband's yeah, yeah, yeah. Harrison Reed. While he was standing there. Yeah, yeah. Who's, yeah I've got to say, Harrison Reed's great. Last game, I questioned as to whether we should be, we should be playing at, um, Alex Tetty because Harrison Reed's small in stature. But he's tenacious, he defends well, and he plays the ball very well. Yeah, he's a yeah, good pass to the ball, which Teddy isn't. So I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm slightly also concerned about Josh Murphy. Don't get me wrong. Everything we've created really has come through the left-hand side, yeah. Josh Murphy going forward. But he just needs to be more competitive on the defensive end. And I'm not talking about always tracking back. He just needs to press harder, he needs to work harder. He, he kept on doing this thing, a ball would come to him and he'd back off and back off and it would get intercepted. You've got to come and meet the ball in those situations. Totally. It's like he's, I agree. the guy who sits next to us going, said uh, he's just going through emotions with this. Yeah, yeah, like a lot I agree. Of times he tackles, he's just putting a body in the way. He has no intention no. of winning the ball. Compare that to Madison, yeah. who's hustling out there. Yeah. I mean, I think Madison is looking fantastic and he clearly wants his place. Yeah. And he clearly knows that it's not a given. He's working his ass up out there. I, I've never understood why Josh and last year, why Jake didn't adopt that mentality. Because all great players are tenacious. And if either one of them want to be perennial Prem players, they've yeah. got to learn that. But they, they trot around. People always say, oh, lay off them. They're young. You know, uh, it's not their game. OK, one age has got nothing to do with it because they could well, all the more, Yeah, and all the more reason to put in the shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The engines do it. And two... It can't not be your game. You can't be a luxury player at this level. You know, and and even then, they're not quite good enough to be luxury players. You look at, you know, with aforementioned players we talked about in previous podcasts, players like 
Suarez, Griezmann, Hazard. Oh, they they want it. They, they want hustle. it all the time. On and They're off the ball. Relentless. On and off the ball. And I don't get that from Josh. He looks like a, a deer in the headlights when he hasn't got the ball. Yeah. Um, but the overwhelming feeling is, you know, everyone goes on about this new Farker way of playing with possession and the new philosophy. If the personnel isn't as good as what it was last year, you're going to struggle. Yeah. And, and the, I really felt we were missing Dykes or a Martin Olsen tonight down outside. I agree. Because QPR have knocked on the door. They have had their moments. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> Here is he. Hello. They'll be on the internet tomorrow. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm only bigger in. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a, uh, uh, such a niche well, gag. Five million people watch that clip. You haven't seen Ronnie Pickering okay, YouTube. We'll have to do a thing for the Ronnie, okay. Ronnie Pickering thing. Ronnie Pickering. But Chip we have to win. I have to win because I want to stick up Holloway. Oh, because he's been. I'm, I'm going to hit the floor. Not I'm only just Holloway, all yeah, of his stuff. Yeah. It's that like the playground. So so I cannot believe how much he's been giving it. He's, he's actually been turning to the fans and giving us prolonged. Banter, it's been crazy. Yeah, and a lot of it's not banter, he's been nasty. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he doesn't know about my Jewish heritage, <laughs> that which will be, you know. Actually, put it in a strong way to let it to the FA. <laughs> Can I no, just say. The funny thing, a manager, a manager's never getting kicked out of the ground. You know, if he has a back and forth. Oh, with, I know, I know. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. With a fan, yeah. irrespective of who's to blame, yeah, yeah. the stewards come over and have yeah. a go at a fan. Whereas Chris got They're arrested. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, totally. And he's, he's been the, you know, he's been the antagonist and absolutely, all of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Could I just say quickly before we wrap this up? We always complain about the crap beer and the, the bad snacks down in the ground. We're now drinking 1902 American Pale Ale, which is all right, better. better. And I, I've got myself some... Sweet and salty popcorn. From Norfolk. Norfolk Massive popcorn. bag. See, I saw 110 calories from a distance, and then I didn't read the per 25 gram serving. 110 and, calories. Yeah, exactly. Per, per so, piece of popcorn. False advertising, but still, they're, they're doing better down here, so good on them. Okay, so we've got to do a prediction for full time. I don't give a shit as long as we yeah, win. Yeah, I'm we thinking 1 0. Let's, let's squeeze a goal out of them. We have to win. They are dirty. Well, I don't know. We didn't look like this against Lowestoft. No. That's all I'll say. Or Swindon. All right. No, it's, it's worrying. I'm, I'm a little bit anxious, to be honest. The I want to be positive. I, I'm positive about Farker. I'm positive about all those things, but I just worry that there's holes. Yeah. Not the, just in the squad, in the starting 11. Of course, that the cast isn't capable of playing our standard of football effectively and that we don't have goal production. And we're talking about possession. You know, there's points when um, Oliveira's look completely isolated up top. Yeah. You know, yeah, he's like being doing his best. I agree, I agree. Lone striker, it's not good enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried, I'll oh, be honest. Oh, Sorry, guys, here we go. worried. We'll get back to you after the game. So here we are at the end of the game. 2-0, a fantastic result for Norwich. A massive relief, not just because we won the War of Words with Ian Holloway, who was extremely quiet in the second half once we stuck it up him. But, um, no, just a fantastic result for the boys. What do you reckon, Chris? Um, I now actually feel a bit bad for being so negative at half-time. Uh, the positives I think we can take out of the game is that Harrison Reed was extremely good. And he oh. caps off a great performance oh. with a fantastic goal. Yeah, as was Madison. Well, this is the interesting thing. On our first podcast, uh, you said you think Madison would be OK this season. I said I don't think he'd stand up to the physicality. Boy, has he proved me wrong. Yep. He made, well, for the first thing, he made a ton more tackles than Josh Murphy did. Well, yeah, we'll come on to that. But... Um, but he was yeah, great. He, he was, was great. everywhere. He was good on the ball, but he was up for it, and he was very physical. QPR were dirty today. Really dirty. They were, really, the they were lucky not to get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He let, let far too much go. Far too many advantages. But we need to be a bit cute with that. We need to... Oh, I agree, I agree. You know, I think we got the cute a second, second, second half, yeah. and, and I think uh, you saw Franke and Zimmerman pushing it a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And they, the pair of them are like extras in Universal Soldier, we noticed in the second half. Yeah. But... Um, this still, I think this, this still worries was still a work in, in progress, but man, uh, that was such a great result. And Harrison Reed's goal was an absolute scorcher. Absolute scorcher. Yeah, and boy, did we need it because yeah. at 1 0. They had a go. 
They had they a game. Well, to be honest, they almost scored immediately after we scored. They had a very good opportunity, but the, the guy, I don't know who took the shot, he put it straight down the throat of Angus Gunn, yeah. who dealt with it. Really happy Angus Gunn had a clean sheet. Oh, I think that really would be really important for him. Yeah, so there are a lot of positives, but let's not get it carried away. What I would say is last season we're putting QPR away yep. comfortably. Agree, agree. We should be putting QPR away comfortably. Agree, at home. But I've got to put a message out to Ian Holloway. Now, Ian, you're a good guy, but you gave it too much today. You gave the fans <laughs> too much stick. And if you focus as much on preparing your team as you did on abusing the Irish fans, maybe you wouldn't have lost the game 2 0. Something to think about, Ian. Yeah, because he gave he gave a lot of yeah. Um, jo joke inside. It was I've never had no. a back and forth of a manager like it. No, it went on and on and on. Yeah, yeah, it went on and on. Big nose like six times. I'm like get some new material. You know, we were going really cutting. We were saying he had a win rate of 38. Yeah, we don't know. Now it's 37.7 or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we were giving him really cutting insults and, he was which went deep. and all he was just going yeah big nose big nose I'm like Come tell on, you man. what though value for money it was a great it was a great evening it was like I, really, I really enjoyed it yeah I enjoyed but, it but yeah very, no, relieved, I, very relieved we won and Oliveira scored so you've got to think he's going to start again mm. I still think we need some more goal you know productivity up front maybe we'll get that from the midfield maybe that'll come you know when you put a new manager with so many new players. I mean, yeah. we're so new, look. Mm. That being considered, we were very good today. I suppose I suppose the pessimist might say that we failed the test against a big club, a top six yeah. club like Sunderland. QPR aren't a top six club. No. So the jury's still out on whether we are in that echelon of the league. I really hope we are. I, I mm. like the football. I like I like just how generally German we are. You know, there's this obsession, yeah. there's this, like, uh, penchant for people getting, uh, you know, Scottish managers and personnel. Scottish football's absolute crap. German football's way better than ours. Yeah. So, like, I'm all for it, man. I yeah, think we yeah. should definitely Germanise our, yeah, no, our whole setup. I've got setup. a lot of Germans, and we will be it. great in a penalty shootout. Yeah, shoot I now. bet there's a lot of industrial techno going on down at Colney. But I, I was happy with the way uh, we played... I mean, uh, there was a, a ropey couple of minutes when it went 1-0, but after that, I, th I thought we sort of stifled QPR pretty well. And and we were up for it. We were up for we it. Were we were up we for it. We did grow it. into With the exception the of Josh Murphy, we were up for it. And what, what I found, and, you know, I had said, I might have said it before the game, but I'd certainly said it after Sunderland, I would have played Teddy for Harrison Reed last week. I was wrong. I was mistaken. Yeah. What he brings to the table, and today he was just... He was there defensively, he's, he's definitely. A, yeah, he's a prospect. So he fulfilled that role, but man, A, the goal, but he's, he's passing. He's, he's so much more cultured yeah. than Alex Tetty in, in that part oh, of this of game. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. He's technically a great player and he's yeah. got great vision. He capped off a brilliant performance with a brilliant goal. Now, the one thing about Josh Murphy, we'll, we'll just talk about Josh Murphy briefly, and we don't want to be kind, some kind of assassination on him as a, a player. But, no, because we want him to do well. Yes, and he and he can be blistering going he, forward. Yeah, and he was he was great going forward, but he has to graft more. Sorry, Harrison Reed, who's well, a tiny guy, he yeah. was putting in challenges. He was contesting headers that he was never going to win. Doesn't matter that you're not going to win. No, it. No, no, you no, put no. a body on someone. Yeah. It and makes it causes a mistake. And also, he, and also he chopped a couple of people down as well. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, Madison I, was fouling too. Madison was going for stuff. Wes yeah, was going for yeah, stuff. They wasn't where, exactly. Give them look, something look, to think about. Wes is what 34, 35, 35, yeah. and he put in a much more tenacious shift defensively than Josh Murphy. Yeah, completely unacceptable. Josh wants to watch the tape. Watch Madison and take notes, and then he'll be just yeah. fine. But he needs to give us more. And his brother was guilty of the same thing last year. And I don't buy into this whole, yeah, well, they need to, you know, save their energy for when they're going forward. I don't buy into that. I don't buy into that. They're, they're professional athletes. I should say, because obviously because of the camera shot, you can't see where we are. We're in the wall pack. Not the old wall pack that you got served when you were 13 in the 90s, the other wall pack opposite John Lewis. Where well, you got served when you were 15 in the <laughs> 90s. Yeah, yeah. Not anymore, though. Reputable business. But if you can just look around, it's, it, is, it is the classic pub. It's old school. And you it's know? quiet. And it's quiet. It's quiet, it's quiet. And also, we've got these weird carvings on the wall. I look at that. Yeah. that that's so Game of Thrones. It's like... A tribute that's King's Landing. To, that is King's Landing. Yeah. Tribute to the... Uh, what was the one called where they set fire to the sea? 
uh, what with um, oh yeah God. the battle it's called something isn't it the black water yes there so, you go yeah. battle of black water there you yeah, go with um, matey for, for you Thrones fans especially for you there was a guy who died well he yeah. didn't die he died eventually in Game of Thrones what he was meant to be the king that the doesn't top. narrow it down a lot he died in Game of Thrones we're not here to talk about Game of Thrones alright okay All keep right. it up keep it up we out thank you yeah.